This is my hospital. This is my hospital. It'll all be over soon. No, please, please don't make the little city my baby. Don't let them take my baby. This is it, too. No, no, it's not. It's me. It's me. It'll be just fine. No, 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 Don't touch the child. You should be resting. I'm taking my baby out of here. I told you, you didn't have anything to worry about. Why don't you go back to bed and lie down? It's the Demerol. It takes a few hours to wear off.
five or six years of analysis. <laughs> you know, it, it's really it's handy. I mean, every time you see that accent, you might hear chai. You should have Elvis and Ron more times than Notre Dame. On a holiday, we'd all be on a four-day work week. But you have to look at it from some point of view. I mean, if she lives with him, she's psychotic. If she divorces him, she's neurotic. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Repetition is a bore. But for the next 20 odd years, I don't want anybody to say that I forgot. That it wasn't my responsibility. That I had more important duties. There should be nothing more important than the proper raising of the child. The toys she plays with, the books she reads, her education, opportunities, friendships. Her every moment, sleep or awake, shall be guided and protected. Funny day we were supposed to have. We still might have it. It's just a passing show. Where's the boss? In the back room. Thanks, Mary. Oh, Mr. Schreiber, I know I promised them to you for yesterday. Uh -huh. I do. I do understand your. I know your customers are screaming. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, all right. Oh, oh Mr. Schreiber, it is a pleasure to do business with a man like you. Mr. Schreiber is unhappy. Mr. Schreiber's only happy when he's unhappy, I think. Nice. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. Fantastic. That one? That Oh, no. Too cute. Great. Beautiful. Oh, I gather you sort of like them. Mm. You have a talent for coming up with the right thing at the right time. You're positively uncanny. Ah. Beatrice. Beatrice. You got to yell? Only because you're going deaf. Right? Schreiber is screaming for his pattern. Schreiber is your problem, your mind. Yeah, but I promised them for him first thing tomorrow morning. It's normal already. Uh, but the three of us can do it. Six o'clock, I go home. Oh, Beatrice, not even for me. Not even for you, but I keep my Mara's rating one minute. All right, so don't stand there. Start cutting. I'm cutting. Mary? Mary? Oh. And you work late. Uh-uh. <laughs> Well, let me put it another way. I have a problem. Therefore, you are... Oh. 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 Jessica? Jessica? Jessica, someone just smashed into your car. Oh. No! Cut! 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 Do as good as Oh. Is, is this your car? Oh! oh Did you do that? 
I am sorry about this, I, you know. Do you realize I, that car's only got 600 miles on it? You know what? I was coming in and I just got a little bit too close. I thought maybe How I could, could just you do such a stupid in. thing? Well, I got a little bit too close the to the curb. When I tried to turn the wheel in one it. way, it just went the other way. It's I'm only sorry. got 600 miles on it. I know. I'm sorry. I suppose you think that's funny. Well, oh, <laughs> just a little. You are the most little. inconsiderate, bumbling fool I've ever met in my life. Well, actually, yet we haven't met. My name is, uh... Excuse me, I don't want to be rude, but I don't care what your name is. Just take a good look at my car. Get off. Lady, now, calm down. It. down. It's just a bent fender. It's not the end of the world, for crying out loud. <sighs> okay. What are you going to do about it? Well, I, uh... I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to go to my van. I'm going to uh, find the insurance policy, find a local agent, <laughs> and uh, have him fix it. Simple as that. Okay. Could you do that now for me, please? Sure. Okay. Coming uh, right up. Right here. Be right back. I'll wait right here. Okay. See, I, I know it's... Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> See? I'm waiting. Ah. Uh, well, I'll uh, tell you what. Got some good news and uh, got some bad news. No jokes, please. Well, now first the good news, found the policy. <laughs> but. But. Uh, it expired about two months ago. That is just marvelous. <laughs> You know, you really are the most irresponsible, unorganized, inconsiderate, inconsiderate selfish, bumbling fool you've ever met. You know, something you're a terrific judge of character. Excuse me, could you please tell me what you're going to do about my car? Well, uh, I say what, you got your key? Yeah. Now, if you got to use it, okay, but would you please be careful with it, because everything I own is in there. Now, please, just take care and do anything you want to with it, but I'll hurry back. I'll get yeah, it back in I, no time. I just got this car yeah. three weeks ago. It took me three weeks to learn how to drive it. Don't worry about it. I'll get it if back. If you bring it up, my insurance will go up. You gave him your car. He gave me his for security. Oh. Besides, he has it on his face. Yeah, well, so did the Boston Strangler. Oh, Agnes, I trust him. Oh, darling, there are a few things you have to learn about men. Yes, teacher. All right, you repeat after me. All men are demanding. All men are demanding. All men are self-serving. All men are self-serving. All men are insensitive. Not my Morris. Especially your Morris. You know a little less about men than you know about mm -hmm. Adam. Mm -hmm. Finished. Tired? Exhausted. Huh. Two hours ago, I was exhausted. Now I'm dead. Oh, stop complaining. You said six o'clock? Look, six o'clock. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Good night. Good night. Uh, how am I going to explain it to Morris? Explain what? That I have a headache. You've got a headache. Your carriage is as good as new, madame. A little better since I had it washed and waxed. I don't believe it. Nothing gets fixed in one day in San Francisco. Absolutely nothing. How did you do it? Oh, a little charm. And an extra 50 bucks. I'm sorry, but it really was your fault. Look, I banged up your car, so I feel I owe you just a little bit of something. So how about having dinner with me tonight? Thank you, but I don't go out to lunch or dinner or anything with strangers. Uh, you're right. Uh, my name is Andy Stewart. Good and... night, Mr. Stewart. Uh, no, but, but it, it's not Dutch treat. I'll pay. Hey! I mean it, honest. Hi. It's 7.15 and I'm hungry. If you want dinner, call me at 474-3998. Andy.
Uh, Jessica Gordon? I should be so lucky. Jessica? Jessica? Hmm? Who are you? Who's it from? I don't know. I don't believe it. What is it? It's a menu. A what? A menu. The boy who bumped into my car. What does it say? 2 p.m. and starving. I think he's crazy. I haven't eaten for 29 hours, Miss Gordon. How do you know my name? Oh, I know your name, your address, your phone number, your zip code, and your motor number. Actually, it's your uh, car's motor number. My driver's registration. Ah, uh, how about dinner? You choose the place. Please give up, Mr. Stewart. Well, I haven't even started to work at it. If I do go to dinner with you, will you promise not to leave any more messages on my phone machine? It's a deal. What would you like? The menu you sent me. Have you ever been there? When I got in town yesterday, I haven't been anywhere. Why don't we try it? Well, I just, I thought I'd order ahead, just on the chance that you'd come. Well, I just got in town yesterday. I haven't been anywhere. Just wanted to make an impression, honest. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you ever learn Japanese? Well, I spent a couple of years in the Orient. Were you born there? Huh, nothing quite that romantic. I was born in a small town in Kansas. How about you? Are you a native of San Francisco? No, I've only been here for two years. I was born in New York. Well, you see how much we have in common? Neither of us is born here. <laughs> a little more sake. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm no? fine. I never knew my mother. She died during childbirth, I was told. And I never could find out who my father was. But for an orphan, I've been awfully lucky, really. You don't have to be lucky to be a model. All you have to have is high cheekbones and long legs. I'm not a model. I'm a designer. At 22? I, I told you I was lucky. It's like I have this guardian angel that's watching over me, and he seems to have more helpers than Santa Claus. Well, that's not a bad fan club. <laughs> when I was six, I lived with this fabulous woman. I used to call her Aunt Irene, and we lived in New Orleans. Then I won a scholarship to art school. I got a job in New York in a top fashion house. And the very next year, some man, I never even knew who he was, arranged for me to have my own showing. And the next thing you know, here I am in San Francisco. I want to know something. Where was this guardian angel of yours when I bumped into your car? <laughs> <laughs> Watching. I like your eyes. I don't care for compliments, thank you, unless they're honest. When I lie, my ears turn red. <laughs> well, I'm going to watch for that. <laughs> well, success seems to come really easy to you, doesn't it? It's not an old thing. Besides, being a success means you're the best at what you do. And I'm not yet. I'm still learning. There's still thousands of things I want to do. Like what? Travel. See Paris, friend. Live there for a while. Hong Kong and see the rest of the Far East. Hmm, interested in oriental design. For my work, their use of color, the drapes, the texture, the design is all fascinating. You know, I've got some books in my van I bet you'd be really interested in looking at. Sandy. What? We've been together for maybe two, two and a half, maybe three hours, and I know next to nothing about you. What? I'm, I'm single. I'm a freelance writer living alone in San Francisco, until I met you, that is. Your ears are turning red. <laughs> Seriously, uh, 
You know everything about me, even my uh, motor number. All I am is locked in my van. And while you're looking at the art books, I'm going to tell you the fascinating story of the life and the times of Andrew Stewart. Come on. I guess I just don't want to end up as one of those girls in one of your stories. Now, wait a minute. I'm not that kind of a writer. <laughs> what kind of a writer are you? <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> well? Oh, I write for magazines. You know, travel brochures and Sunday supplements and stuff like that. Any, anything that kind of keeps me moving around. Agnes said you were a drifter. <laughs> she would. No, I didn't mean that. <laughs> No, my father had a small newspaper, and, well, he died before I got back from Nam. So I sold it, and I spent some time in the Far East and Europe. I've hit about 19 states in the past 12 weeks, which explains why my insurance policy lapsed. Doesn't explain it to me. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised how long it takes my mail to get from one general post office to another. <laughs> Here, cheers. I sure do. I even charged my battery by Tinkerbell. Two fortunes, please. Do I hear the sound of silver coins? Yeah. Uh, coming right up. Let's have it. The music that makes men dance. Fortunes and philosophy all for the same price. <laughs> now, what's your name, honey? Jessica. Jessica Gordon. <laughs> you. Thank you. Okay, what does yours say? In the second millennium, the child of a child shall inherit the earth and havoc shall reign. <laughs> what does yours say? Says you are going to get the Nobel Prize for literature, own three houses, two cars, one yacht, and marry a girl you met in San Francisco a week ago yesterday. Come on, really. Come on, show it to me. Andy, tell me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Andy, come on now. I showed you my place. <laughs> no, Let me no, see it. No, no, come on. no, 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 no,
and Wayne, you're not. Listen, lady, this is a lot of horse. my life and got killed for doing it. Kenny, it's not your fault. Just a damn stupid accident. Please, Andy, I just have to be alone tonight. I've got to be by myself. Please. Please. Oh, you're feeling this way. Oh, please, Andy, go away. Please. Not even the horses are home. Jessica. Go away, Andy. Jessica, look, I'm sorry about the guy that got killed, but what does that have to do with the way we feel about each other? I don't feel anything. The uh, hell you don't! Oh, look, Andy, it's over. Why? Because I'm bad news. Don't you understand? I'm bad for any man. Because a stranger got killed? Andy, he's not the first. He's the third. Third what? First time, I was only 16. I met a boy in art school. We're friends, good friends. He committed suicide. A lot of people... And just last winter, I met a man at a party. We dated. He was killed in a hunting accident. Were you there? What do you mean, was I there? What difference does it make? Don't you see that every time I get close to a man, he dies? I still say it was just a coincidence. Please, go away, Andy. Just go away. Go home. Leave me alone. Please, go away. No, Jessica, damn it. Not with a door between us. If you want to get me out of your life, then you're going to have to come out here and look at me and tell me. Love you, Jessica.
want to talk about it. No. It's not exactly a secret. I said I don't want to talk Look, about it. For the last three days, you have been slamming doors, ripping up designs, and yelling at everyone. Agnes, please don't push me and don't nag at me. I am just trying to talk some sense into you. I told you the first time I laid eyes on him what he was all about. You don't know anything about well, him. Well, I know that he walked out on you with good riddance. He didn't walk out on me. I sent him away. But that's even better. Oh, Jessica, please trust me. I know that he's not for you. What? Where are you? Come back here, Jessica. Sorry about that. 
Oh, cussing is a bad habit of mine. One of many. Jessica Gordon, Father Wheatley. Ooh, your hands are cold, Jessica. That means you've got a warm heart. Or so they'd have us believe. Well, you're right, Andy. She's as pretty as a spring morning. Say, are you any good at uh, sign painting? Uh-uh. Awful. You, my dear? I'm afraid not. Oh, pity. <laughs> Still, the good Lord will provide. Come in, come in. Ooh. I'm in sore need of a cleaner, too. You have no idea how dusty this place gets. But that's my problem. Your concern is the wedding, right? When is it to be? Next Wednesday, Father. Right? Jess, what are you doing out there, honey? Come on in. Come on. Warm sunshine. Uh, there's a nice little garden out there. Okay, Father. I wonder if you'd mind, uh, something has come up, uh, very important. Could I speak to you tomorrow? Sure, Father. <laughs> come on, Jess, let's go. Stuff back home in storage, a stereo and some pictures and a couple of Tiffany lamps. Everything will fit just perfectly. High board chess, uh, Morse chair with a lace doily, and my father's old moose head. Oh, Andy. <laughs> I'm only kidding. In that case, it's time for the surprise. Mm hmm. I'm rather proud of my cool. You've been dying of curiosity, admit it. Only on the inside. Now, only it's uh, too big for one person. I sleep on my right side. Oh, perfect, because I had to sleep on my left. <laughs> oh, oh, I sleep like a fur mattress. It's great for the back, you know. Uh, there's only one thing. I like privacy in my bedroom. Get in here. I know, but I know how he's getting out. Hey, Cap, get. Come on, 
back to bed. I don't understand what, what... Neither do I. It's just that... I do know that she's been... touched by Astaroth. By who? The devil, Astaroth. Oh, there. Come on. Is this some kind of a joke? No. No, I looked it up. The signs are all there. The... That unnatural chill, that cold wind that came sweeping through the church. But these old buildings are all like that. No, no. When she passed the altar, the darkness came. You're serious? Oh, come on, Father. I can't get involved in your superstitions. Yes or no, will you marry us tomorrow or not? Would you at least delay until I can contact Father Kemschler? He no, can answer. Who is this Father Kemschler? He's an authority on on the Book of the Dead and and Satan and the forces of evil. I think we'll have a civil ceremony. Goodbye, Father. Brown was a bumbler. I mean, he was devoted and conscientious, but the man was inept. I'm sure you'll agree with me that he could have protected Jessica without sacrificing himself. But that doesn't solve the present problem, does it? No, oh, no, 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 of course not. No, of course, you're, uh, you're right, Mr. Rimmon. Uh, the problem is Jessica. However, I do think it's a minor... I can assure you that uh, this, uh, this, uh, well, <laughs> what, 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 what should I call it? A, uh, 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 an infatuation. That's it. That's perfect. This infatuation will pass. I, I promise you that. I, I, no need, no need, no, no need for, for concern, Mr. Lee. There is. There is no reason for you to have bothered yourself by, by coming here. Mr. Mm -hmm. I've never, I've never, I've never failed you. I, I have had the two most difficult years. Mr. Oh! you know my record. You, you know my sense of responsibility. Mr. Rimmon, Mr. Rimmon, I've never asked you for anything. Please, 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 give me an answer. Oh, God, please. I've never asked you for anything just, just to help me this one time. Mr. Rimmon, please. Please, there has to be something you can do. Please, 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 please
7.30 and be ready. I'll get married without you. Right down. Jessica? Hey, it's the impatient groom. Jessica, I thought I taught you never to lie. Really, Mr. Roman, she hasn't. She's just as I remember. Get in the car, darling. We have plenty of time to talk. She looks rather well, wouldn't you say? Last time I saw her, she was all arms and legs. I was afraid perhaps the post-hypnotic suggestion may have made her forget me. I merely obscured her memory of the past two years. San Francisco, Agnes. She was a warm friend of yours, wasn't she? 
Well, of course, she has no memory of the boy, either. Please don't think me presumptuous, Mr. Rimmon, but who does she think you are? Why, a warm friend of yours, of course. Oh, hello, baby. Hello. Everything's exactly as I remember it. I'm afraid you've outgrown your old room. That's where I stay anyway. <laughs> oh, well. It's been a long Tristan. Why don't you freshen up? I could use a hot bath. Come on, Brutus. Come on. I didn't realize how much I missed her. Personal attachment. I thought it was important, Mr. Rimmon, to give her emotional security. You're quite right. This room has an old world charm that I, I find quite refreshing. It's difficult, but I try to retain some of the old values. However, uh, keeping the proper health and teaching... You're them. aware of the problem? Agnes did mention an infatuation, but I thought she and Brown... You were saying? Nothing important, sir. Jessica and Andrew Stewart are in love. And as long as that love endures, Jessica's union with Astaroth cannot be consummated. In the past, when problems arose, an accident took care of it. Yes, but it's too late for an accident. We cannot destroy him until we destroy their love. I can think of at least a dozen ways to... Agnes made that same mistake. Mr. Rimmon, I'm not Agnes. I know. If you involve yourself, the problem is anything but simple. But soluble. Of course. Jessica has no memory of Andrew Stewart. Now he must be made to forget her. Yes. But how? I believe it was Eve who first discovered the secret. She used an apple. I'll be a bit more inventive. I use the temptation of all love. Gentlemen, flight number 34, service at the 
go to New Orleans will be arriving shortly at gate number three. I'm sorry, but she's an But I've got to see her. The regulations are quite... Lady, I didn't fly all the way down here from San Francisco to be stopped by some silly rule, please. I don't have the authority. Now, her mother is in the waiting room. Perhaps she'll let you go see her. Pardon me. Write a story? No. no more stories. My child's in pain. You understand? She's convulsing, tearing herself apart. I'm not here to do a story. I just want to talk. All I've gotten from everyone is talk. Nothing but talk. I, I want somebody to do something. I don't know what I can do, but... Your husband... He died two years ago. going to do? Just start from the beginning. There was nothing in the newspaper, so... It was three or four days ago. She, she fell off a bike. A neighbor said that she was frightened by a cat. Stupid. She loves cats, dogs, birds. It's insane. Has she ever drawn this before? No. The first thing she said was that her eyes hurt. And then... Uh, Mrs. Dayton? I think your little girl is going to be fine. But an hour ago, I saw that... Her fever's broken. She's sleeping now. Oh, God! I can't believe it. All of a sudden, Cindy's fine and you're here. I'd like to keep the girl under observation for 48 hours. Oh, anything you say, Doctor. Why don't you go home and get some sleep? I think I'll feed her first. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Let's go. See you tomorrow. Okay, Linda, what'll it be? Antoine's, Galatoire's? Remember the first time we ever had dinner together? <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I am in no mood to share a hot dog. <laughs> Crazy drawings of Jessica. You sure you love her? Yes. But you only knew her for three weeks. Come on, let's have some wine. You've had enough wine. Champagne, champagne to celebrate you coming to my rescue. I didn't do anything. Shh. I don't want to hear about that. I deserve that. I, I didn't mean it. No, 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 no. I, I really did deserve it. I sent you that stupid letter. I got married on a whim. I've made one mistake after another. I don't blame you for being angry. I'm not angry. I would be. Well, I'm not. Forgive me.
nobody here. Where's the child? She went into a coma immediately, is that correct? Yes, And she but constantly drew the pencil. I don't know what she was drawing. Was she talking gibberish, a foreign language? She was talking English. Well, what did she say? Exactly, word for word. How do I know? M mostly she mumbled. She, she said something about a child or, or, or a second child, or children taking over the world. I don't know. Father Kempsler, is all this necessary? If it weren't, I wouldn't have flown down here. I know you're trying to help. I've got dozens of letters from people who want to help, but it isn't necessary. My child is fully recovered. I don't believe it. Well, that is your problem. The doctor said we could bring her home in 48 hours. I was there. I, I... You saw her and she looked fine? No symptoms of anything? Well, we didn't exactly see her, but... Call the hospital. Mother Kemsler, it's one thing for you to break into my house, but to stand there and give me orders. That's something else. Please, call the hospital. Is that better? It's too bad about Father Wheatley. I never bought him a man to take his own life. Who said he did? The police. I've known him all my life. He didn't commit suicide. Are you trying to tell me that he was murdered? By whom? Why? Three questions. You wouldn't understand the answer to any of them. <laughs> Father Kemsler, is all this necessary? If it weren't, I wouldn't have flown down here. You can prove that. I don't want to hear philosophy. My child is desperately ill. Unless we get her out of here and perform a rite of exorcism, your child will die. Oh, that's a hell of a thing to say. That's pretty close to the truth. Don't talk in parables. Come out and say what you have to say. She's in a coma. She draws the pentacle of asthma. Nobody can make any sense out of those scratchings. Her soul... Wait, wait, wait. Father Wheatley's church in San Francisco. And that quote on the wall, a fortune teller gave it to us. We thought it was a joke. That's the key to all this. The sign of the devil Astaroth in San Francisco. The sign of Astaroth in New Orleans. You're the linking factor. Only an exorcism will tell us why. No! You must trust me. Trust you? You break into my house? You scare me half to death. You tell me my baby's possessed. She's not half as sick as you are. Perhaps she listened to you. Father, that exorcism, it's just medieval. It's insane. My baby fell off a bike. She hurt herself. Tell him, Andy. Tell 
Whatever you think you're here, you're not to come into this room. Is that clear? I'm staying here. You're not trained. You're not prepared. You don't even believe. All the same, I am staying. Then there'll be no exorcism. I'm sorry. But what harm can there be if Andy stays? Because I can't perform the rite with anyone in this room who is not an ordained priest of God. All right, Father. seem to be weakening, Aspera. Otherwise, why choose such a frail battleground? <laughs> I presume you'll be showing me some more of what's left of your strength. <laughs> no, Aspera, no allies from outside. Just one-on-one, -on -one, you and me, like the last time. Remember, huh? I'll show you the power of God. Holy, holy, holy. Shall I make you kneel before me? Before the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Saint George. Holy Saint George. Holy Saint George. Diabile astroto, recognosce sententiam tuam, et da honorem deo vivo et vero, da honorem filio eius, et spiritui santo. before him, as smoke is driven away, so drive away them, as wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish in the presence of God. I'll get a blanket. Where is it? In the hall. It's in the hallway, Andy. What's happening up there? I don't know, baby.
Father Kemp, sir? Father Kemsler. Father Kemsler, you all right? We move her, he'll follow. Then we'll move her again and again. Until, until what? Until his love dies or he does. Poor child upstairs. You saw Father Wheatley dead. You've met the presence of evil. Is it so difficult to believe? Because there's got to be a rational explanation for everything. I know that. You know nothing. I know that I'll never stop loving her. And I know they'll do anything they can to stop you. You'll just have to kill me. You've no idea what you're letting yourself in for. You've no conception of what they can do to you. They'll make your life a living hell because they've got to destroy your love for Jessica. They may kill you. And by that time, you may want them to. Father, this is the 20th century. Things like that don't happen anymore. <laughs> you know your Shakespeare? There are more things in heaven and earth to rest you than are dreamt of in your philosophy. When you need me, I'll be there. Just 
should have mentioned that Sister Monica in New York. I'm going to be making another mistake if I let you go. I have a choice. That much in life. Do you mind if I keep loving you? If you don't find her, 